What's going on, Print Fam? I am Cam, and welcome to the Print Life Shop Management Software uh, 2025 Roadmap Update. I'm going to show you this list, and it is in some particular order currently in my brain as to what needs to be prioritized based on your guys' feedback. But these things can change, and often they do. So the first thing I want to just show you guys is the purchasing order system. As you know, originally the software was tightly integrated with SNS Activewear, but when I we released that, it really no one was using it, so we actually pulled it back. This system is going to be much more universal, and the details in here are, are pretty straightforward. You know, there's going to be a purchase order page on the left menu, and within that, there will be a list of all of the invoices with specific sizes and colors and on and on. They'll have the brand, the color, the size, the quantity, and what invoices uh, these sizes are going to, and you'll see the, the price from each supplier. Um, and then you'll have a vendor drop-down list, so you can select what vendor you want to order from. Um, and then you'll be able to assign that particular vendor. Um, it's a very simple structure, but it's going to work really well. Uh, you know, it's the whole PO thing. So we're going to be working on that. That's what we're actively working on it now. It should be done very shortly. So then the next thing that we're working on after this is the uh, stores features. Um, and this has been... We've been taking feedback and some of the things we've added to this first version, but we also have a secondary stores feature that we'll tackle after we roll these first uh, adjustments to the stores feature out. Okay, let me go into actually full screen mode here. So let me see what we have here. So here's the big ones, and I'm just going to run down a quick list on this. The first obvious the most needed thing is just multiple color options for individual products. So right now, if you have a red and a black shirt, you have to have one product for red shirts, one product for black shirts. In my mind, when I was designing the stores, I never imagined that you guys would have so many items on a fundraising store. I thought that you would have like four to six products. I could have never imagined seeing 30, 40 items on a, on a product store page. So... I was wrong in my assumptions, so we're going to be giving you the multiple color options for products. So one product can have multiple colors. Simple. We're going to build it out. It needs to be there. Uh, the other big one is adjust, adjusting the price for each size. So you have double X, triple X, four X. You may charge $20 for th small through extra large, but you may charge 30 for any of the bigger sizes. So we're going to make the, we're going to give you the ability to just to adjust the price for each size. Um, and then also just to remove products or I'm sorry, sizes from the product offering. So even if it has small through 6XL, maybe you don't want to offer 6XL as an option. Maybe you don't want to offer extra small as an option. You'll be able to remove sizes from the product listing. Um, and we're also going to do a thing with uh, adjust, I'm sorry, additional options on products. So for instance, if you have a product, uh, say it's a dry fit shirt, but you want to offer custom names and numbers and you charge a certain amount for it, with the additional options, you'll be able to go. You'll be able to go to an individual product, assign an additional option to it, and then when your customer goes to check out, if they want names and numbers, they'll be able to select it. It'll add that ten dollar charge to the thing. They'll input whatever information they want, and now you'll have the production information, and you'll have charged them that additional amount for that uh, for that add on for that product add on. Um, we're going to roll out the first version of that and then we'll take your guys' feedback if it needs more flexibility or if, if there's more functionality that it needs. But the first version, it'll just be um, an input title, you know, a price, um, and then it'll relay that and then a, a customer input option where it can relay the information to you for production. It'll be simple, but it'll function really well. Uh, another thing that we've been requested a lot is the um, just to be able to set shipping prices instead of relying on like the estimation um, from USPS or UPS, uh, maybe sometimes you're paying five dollars to ship it. Maybe sometimes it's ten. You just want to do a flat ten dollars shipping fee on every uh, customer's order. We're going to give you the ability to just standardize shipping prices instead of relying on um, Easy Post to do the estimation and whatnot. Uh, also, and we'll change this. This you'll probably see the UI being updated while we're working on the stores before we roll these other features out, but. Uh, you know, I, we do see the need to make some changes with the UI. Like, for instance, the, the, just the two-column system that it is right now, we're going to make it more responsive. So on a wider screen, it'll do four or six products, you know, uh, from left to right. And, uh, you know, maybe do some more corner rounding, some text uh, adjustments. Just make it look prettier on the store page overall. 
Uh, I think just make it look more modern. The first version of it was really just designed as a, a, a quick down and dirty layout just to get the stores functioning. But I do think it's time to revisit the UI a little bit and make it look a little bit more modern. So we'll be doing that. Another one, and this one I have, I've taken some feedback. We know that bulk ordering on products is a thing and we know that some stores do offer this feature this is last on our to-do list we're going to get everything else done with the stores and then we will add that bulk ordering option that you can uh, turn on for individual products or for an entire store we know it's a feature that is utilized sometimes but only certain stores use it so it's not like it doesn't have mass appeal yet but we will add it it's the bottom of the priority Okay, so this is kind of our uh, our stores overview. We know we need to do it. It's coming. We're going to be tackling it as soon as we're done with the purchase orders. So it's right around the corner. And then some of the other things, which we, we will be building them, it just depends on what gets tackled first. So the first one that I feel like everybody wants that I talked to is a uh, just a very simple mock-up generator. On step three, you'll be able to see all the shirt colors in the product. You'll be able to uh, import a PNG, move the thing around, resize it, left chest, full front, whatever, full back, um, and then export that as your markup. You'll be able to assign it to that location as a mock-up right then and there. The mock-up generator... I didn't believe it was important for the longest time, but uh, I've had enough of you guys say it, so we, we are prioritizing that. We know it needs to be done. But we're sort of chewing on what ones we should tackle first. The mock-up generator, the Shopify integration, which I think is going to become more relevant as um, people are starting to pick up direct to film and bring it into their shops. I, I know it's important. We, we will be doing it. Staff accounts with full permissions, uh, multiple logins for all the different types of people you have in your shop management salespeople staff accounts is important another one is the inventory system i think that these are like i would say these are our top ones for this year and we may not even get all of these done this year but our goal is to get the stores the mock-up generator the shopify staff accounts and inventory systems that's it's pushing it but we're going to try. And I'll tell you why it's difficult to get this, these kind of features done in a time frame. I'll tell you that at the end of this. Um, and then the rest of this stuff is just other things we're working on. Let's see. Uh, tax exemptions on the new client pop-up. Uh, quick item adjustments. Uh, some updates to the QuickBooks integration. There's some changes we need to make. The art file manager. I don't know when it happened, but it just it doesn't work right now. So we need to tackle it. And these, are, these ones below here are not major features, but they're things that we'll tackle in between a lot of this other development stuff. What I was saying earlier, I want to get to something as to why things happen the way they happen with software development. Uh, let me bring this back to the close-up. One of the problems with developing software, and I didn't know about this until the software launched and we had a large customer base, uh, you really have two buckets. You have the bucket of creating new features. These are all the new things like a purchase order system or, or the fundraising stores or a mock-up generator or a Shopify integration. These are hard features that have to be built into the framework of our system, right? This, this bucket requires devs. You got to put developers in this bucket to build these things out. Now, we are a very small team. We have a limited amount of developers. And uh, in a lot of ways, that makes us more efficient than a big team. But the problem is, is if we put developers into the features thing, then we, this bucket over here, which is the, um, I would say customer support, small next day bug fixes, um, making adjustments to things that aren't working exactly right. Th that's this other bucket, the, um, well, let's just call it the bugs bucket. So we have this group of developers and they can either all go over here and do this, or some of them go over here and then some of them go here. But what ends up happening is if we're getting a lot of reports of bugs, of like little things, and it's software, it's inevitable, bugs are going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Any system you go to, no matter whether you're paying a million dollars a month for it or a dollar a month for it, whether they have a million developers or one developer, there will always be bugs. But if we take our small team and put them in the software thing, there's nobody over here in the features development thing. So we're constantly bouncing between that. Um, and that's where if, we, if we're getting a lot of support tickets for things that need to be fixed immediately, we have to prioritize that. Even, even over this, that gets prioritized over this roadmap. It, ju it just has to. But when we're getting a lot of them, or if you're asking for little feature changes like, um, you know, adding a checkbox here or the ability to change the price over here, 
it, those aren't really bugs, but when people request those, a lot of the times if we can do them in a day or three days or a week, we still tend to tackle those littler things first, which means, again, we're not able to go into these big system features. So on the main roadmap, when we get into a thing where we're like, okay, it's, it's purchase order system time, all of our development goes over to there, and you may see a slight lull in our ability to fix like little day in day out things while we get this PO system done. And then when we launch that, we'll take the devs in and now they'll be kind of parted up between refining the PO system and, you know, tackling daily bugs and little usability features that you guys request. I, I just think it's important for you guys to sort of understand the flow. It's the exact same thing in your print shop. You know, there are days where you're focused on taking customer quotes, contacting your customers, doing all that stuff. And then there are days where you're, you shut the damn phone off and you're out in the shop doing production, right? Okay. So I just wanted to explain that to you guys so you understand the methods behind this madness. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much our roadmap for 2025. Hopefully... I've relayed some information here on what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be uh, functioning moving forward. I apologize for not being as communicative. I've just always felt like um, when, and this is what we've been doing up until this point, someone reports a bug or we build out a feature, we would just sort of roll them out and then just move on. We're, we're just going to be tracking the list of all the things we've done. And then at the end of every quarter, um, I'll shoot up a notification in the dashboard and then you'll, it'll link to the uh, printlife.com a uh, news article that we've posted on what our uh, all of our updates are for that quarter. Okay, that's it, man. Uh, thank you guys so much for subscribing to the software. We are growing. We are getting better. Our user base is getting bigger and stronger. Um, and I really appreciate everybody who's been patient with me. I'm still learning how to run this software thing just in terms of like what we're doing right now. So I appreciate your patience as I figure out this part of it. I think we've got development and shit down. It's just now it's all about... Uh, my communication with you guys. So I'm actively focused on that right now. Okay. Take care, guys.